The LHG is today's passage is uh, drawn chapter 13 to 16. From chapters 13 to 16 are uh, Jesus' last sermons. After Jesus washed his disciples' feet, and he said to them, When they serve each other and love one another, everyone will know that you are Jesus' disciple. Jesus washes them, even though he knew that Judas will sell him off and Peter will deny him three times. Jesus proclaims to his disciples that only Jesus is the way, truth and the life, and that only those who live in Jesus, the true vine, will bear fruit. He also pro promises to send the Holy Spirit to his fearful disciples and comfort them that their worries will turn into joy. Let's read together. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this word to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas in Cariot, Simon's son to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come in from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was whipped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean and you are clean, and that every one one of you. For he knew who was to betray him, that was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and nerd, and you are right. Or so I am. If I then, your Lord and the teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you have believed that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain over whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table at Jesus' eyes. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus, of whom 
he was speaking. So that disciple leaning back against Jesus said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped him. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon in Cairo. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money back, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I have I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commitment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one for one another. Verse thirty-six. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Chapter 14 Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to yourself. That where I am you may not may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can, I, how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me, the Father, except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I had been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the, God, in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my con- commitments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, 
to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor, nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I leave you also will leave. In that, that, in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he will he, he it is who loves me. And he no loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love you, him and manifest myself to you. Judas, not in Cariot, said to them, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the words? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And will he, we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the word gives do I give you to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me said to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the word may know that I loved the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Chapter 15 I am the true vine, and the fa my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by, myself, by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for a part from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and with us. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so that I, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be Full. This is my commandments that you love one another as I love it as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do 
what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, choose me, but I chose you, and I and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Verse eighteen. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as it own as its own. But because you are not the of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I had said to you: a servant is not greater than his master. If they Persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have sinned and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when The Helper comes, whom I will send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness about me, and also you also will bear witness, because you have seen, have been with me from the beginning. Chapter sixteen. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of. The synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God, and they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to to, to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was tr- with you. But now I am going to Him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth: it is to you your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I say, said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Verse sixteen. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. 
So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will see you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, so they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, that what I meant by saying, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will return into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she, ha she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but it will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came for, from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. He disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and now using figurative speech. Now we know that you know that all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered each to his own home, and will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the word you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the word. Amen. Now we're gonna discuss we're gonna share the application questions. Um, the first, the core of relationship, uh, core of discipleship is serving and love. Who are the people we should serve and love in 2024? Uh, second, the true love is love one another, even you know they will be betrayed. What do you need first for this love? And third question, what do you need for a fruit-bearing life? And the fourth question, what are the ministries of the Holy Spirit in chapter 16? And the last question, is please share in the comments below what you learned about Jesus through today's passage. Let's pray together. Um, dear gracious Lord, who is almighty and loving and merciful, uh, you taught us how to love one another and becoming a disciple of Jesus. It is showing your love when we stick with you because you are the way, truth and the life. Thus, we are able to bear fruit through the, you, Lord. Thank you for your love that taught us. Um, and we want to we want to rem resemble you as a disciple of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people.